Especially all things uh, I've got Dr. Insaney in the house. It's the last couple of days he's with us. So I prepared a, few, a tooth here, and you can see it in the image over here. This mandibular molar here, and when I removed the amalgam, I saw some decay. Now he's a, this gentleman is a, a head and neck radiologist, oral maxillofacial radiologist. I want to discuss so why I can't or why I can see well, sometimes the radiographic appearance of decay on teeth and relate that to intraorally. Whenever you look at a radiograph, whether it's a bite wing or it's a periapical radiograph, what you do is you look at these, uh, you know, uh, the, cr the, the crown portion, and you can see this part is very, very sharp, and then the other part is a little bit hazy. So this sharp area is the lingual cusp, and the upper hazy part is the buccal cusp. So to look at a bite wing radiograph, especially bite wing radiograph, and you're looking, looking for decay, especially recurrent caries under the amalgam and all, making sure that the buccal and the lingual cusp should be totally superimposed on each other. So like in this case, the lingual cusp and the buccal cusp are very close to each other. So this is an ideal radiograph where your radiation is going along the floor, the pulpal floor, they're parallel to the pulpal floor. In this case, you can see the buccal uh, and the lingual are a little bit divergent, so it's still acceptable, but it's not, you know, it's not exact radiograph, which, you know, so this is an ideal radiograph. The second thing what you do is when you look at this ra this area here, you Hold can on. see this, on, this is more convex. This is more convex. So if the radiation is going and it's going to be aligned along the contact point, radiation is going to go through this area. So if it is more convex, it will pass through the lesser part of enamel. In this case here, it is more flat. See, this, this part is more flat. So the radiation has to go through longer distance, you know, longer distance through the enamel. And what happens when it has traveled through the longer distance of enamel, it's going to get attenuated, it's going to get absorbed, and it may not be able to show the changes in this area. So compared to a flat surface and convex surface, convex surface will show chances are that it will show more earlier, you know, it might show uh, a better uh, smaller lesions as compared to a flatter surface. So it's all, you know, based on how much radiation has to go through the enamel. And you were talking maxillary teeth. Uh, yeah, and the other thing you should do, is you should look at that, uh, the, the lower and the mandibular molar, traditionally we say that their contacts are point contacts or little, you know, uh, uh, the, the two convex, the surfaces are more convex on. compared to the maxilla where all the, you know, the contacts are more flatter. And, uh, you know, so when you take a ra bite wing radiograph, you can see mostly the, the lower, the mandibular molar will show you the open contacts, but when you, you can easily open the contacts uh, when you take a bite wing. But in the maxilla, you would see that, uh, you know, many times you will see the first and second proximal surfaces will be overlapped because of this broader contact. And the trick is that, you know, you have to pray to God to get the radiation go through the, para, you know, the contacts in the lower as well as the, at the upper at the same time to open the contacts in a bite wing. Suppose you have only like a mandibular contacts open but not the maxillary contacts, then you take a radiograph, look at the line and uh, like the way the orientation of the contact and you just move your x-ray cone and align it to the contact point of the maxilla. So you might get an overlap uh, on the lower, but you will open up the contacts in the maxilla. So it's not like you can just take one bite wing and you can open the contacts now. You have to sometimes, you have to individualize your bite wing based on the orientation of your contacts. So we were talking also, so I know that, and I've shown you the photos before, there's decay yeah. on this molar, but remember we were talking about, you were talking about a dynamic radiograph with yes. the digital right now, and sort of using the gamma. Yeah. So when you look at this radiograph, you're looking at one brightness and, uh, you know, uh, the, the contrast now. This is one static image you have. But when you look at the digital image, you should just kind of vary your brightness and, con you know, and the, the, the grayness of your contact. And, uh, and you could just see that it's a very dynamic image. So you come from, you know, the, on, on your scale, here, this is brightness and uh, lightness. Here is your gamma value. 
gamma value is like you know you're comparing brightness and uh, uh, darkness on a very smaller scale so you know here you could just make sure that you look at this way and change it and wherever you see the best uh, contracts that would be the place where you think that you might have a contact in deca dental decay and uh, that's the problem with this digital radiography is like um, you know I, I might look at a little you know a lower contrast images somebody will prefer a higher contrast images so uh, you know uh, this is like a low contrast image and uh, this is you know uh, like a little high contrast high contrast means you can see the enamel and the dentin this one here is a low contrast where you cannot differentiate between enamel and dentin. So change the densities and contrast and uh, you know uh, when you look at a digital image. Awesome. So yeah. let's carry on. So we remove the restoration. You can see we have that fracture line right here and we have some an incipient lesion actually this is cavitated. Yeah. And then we go in here. Let me just zoom in here can see the fracture line but we can't obviously we can't see those mesial distal fracture lines radiographically but then we see this and why I wanted to discuss you discuss it right now and you sort of mentioned because of the flat contact was this did not show up so radiographically the radiation gonna go through this and can you see that it's going to be attenuated the calcium this is 98 degree 98 percent uh, or inorganic calcium and phosphate and all the high atomic number thing so radiation has to go through this and then then this part and then this part and then it comes out so uh, whatever the little change in the density will not be you know you will not be able to see that mm. in, in, in sometimes when you change the angle and you might be able to say that okay I'm gonna pass through the narrower part of the enamel mm. and you might be able to get that but that is you know um, we are we are we are designing some sort of software where they can look at this you know uh, area and see if there's very very subtle change in the densities. And then finally, we were talking with Dr. Dre as well, just sort of that incipient lesion, and sort of the opinion of whether or not you would restore that. We talked a little bit about that, whether we'd restore this to this finish line or remove it, because when I used the Explorer, this was non-cavitated, and. It's interesting to see the demineralization in that region. Do you have any comments about that? The, the demineralization, there, there is a little bit, uh, you know, like a staining on it. As you said, if there is no cavitation, just kind of, you know, gently probe around it and uh, just fill it up and then, you know, maybe put some sort of a sealant on it. Or I like guess, fluoride, you know, fluoride varnish. Fluoride varnish. I think that's what's more indicated yeah, here. And then just hold it that way. All right, super. But uh, well, what do you think about this line here? Is that uh, is that, a fracture line in it's the cuspal area? Hard to say. Uh, okay. Developmental? <laughs> uh, do, you know, I, I cannot tell. It could be just like a, a craze line in the enamel, I guess. You know, yeah. it could be that. All right, super. Thanks for your time. Thank you.